All right, well, that brings us through to my favorite part of the evening, and that's where uh, I get to learn a whole lot of stuff as well, too. And we have an exceptional speaker tonight in the form of uh, Lara uh, Adern. Is it Adern or Hearn? I always get this mixed up. I think it's Adern, isn't it? It's Arden, like Garden. Arden. There you go. There you go. See <laughs> my pronunciation. So I'm going to blame it on sort of being born up to in New Zealand for a yeah. while. <laughs> <laughs> my Kiwi accent. <laughs> So uh, we have Lara here. She's going to be talking about um, awards and uh, really sort of looking at, uh, you know, what are the benefits of entering these awards? And, uh, you know, how can you use these awards in your business? How do you write award submissions? Where do you go and find uh, these awards? You've probably seen some of them crop up in social media and your social media feeds, or you might all of a sudden see a blast there of people there who've been nominated and gotten to the finals for awards and wondering how do you do that as well. Or maybe you have entered some of these awards, maybe not quite made it to the final, or maybe you are in the finals and you're looking, well, how do I get to be the winner or sort of a runner up in these awards? Well, tonight is your night because Lara is going to reveal all. She's going to tell you sort of uh, how to do all that and more and then how to use these awards for your uh, business. Now, I met Lara a few weeks ago up in uh, Brisbane and so she was just uh, chatting through sort of a bit about what she does. And I thought, oh, this would be a really interesting topic for us here uh, tonight. So for those that don't know Lara, you're about to get to know her. Um, but a bit of background about her as well, too. She's got a few interesting uh, parts about her too. She likes to make cinematic cameos. Uh, she is also, a, I believe she's a dancer as well too. So I think she's sort of uh, aspiring to appear on Dancing with the Stars or maybe not. Um, but uh, if she certainly is someone that is a uh, copywriter. She's been in this awards arena and it really helped uh, a lot of people in this year. So let's put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Lara Arden. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you. Okay, so let's see if I can do this screen share now and hopefully that will work for us. One, two, three. All right, we've got that. And Fantastic. I'm going to see if I'm All just working. looking just looking for my little menu down the bottom as well, waiting for that to come up so I can take us to the next slide. Is that gonna come up again for us? This is the time when the tech challenge comes in and <laughs> mucks us all up. This is when I do my tap dance. <laughs> maybe, maybe click on it or... Um... Hmm. Um... Well, click your arrow key and see whether that makes a difference. Yeah. It was working before. It, it, yeah, it did. <laughs> uh... We can certainly see your home screen, well, the, the first screen there at the moment. Yeah. Is there a present Some mode? Hmm. Let me change this. I'll just see if I can. Oh, I, maybe do I need to stop share to try and change the. Yeah, maybe, so, maybe right. sort of exit the share and then we'll okay. come back in again. All right. Reboot. Right, yeah. Okay. All right, then we'll do take two. Wait, it's gone now. And I'm sure there are people on screen that are no strangers to trying to find <laughs> out how this uh, Zoom screen sharing works sometimes. Oh, okay, let's try this way. Okay. Back to Zoom and share screen. Mm. Um. <clears throat> so have you, you've clicked the share screen down the bottom and have you got sort of some options there that you can find which uh, show the view? Uh, I'm just, I'm in PowerPoint and I've got it back on like the full screen mode. Oh, there we go. There I can see my little um, controls down the bottom left. So now I think I can share screen and let's see if that works. Yes, they do share disappear screen. sometimes. So there we go. All right. So we can see your full screen in your slides. And then if you go up to, where is this, this slideshow at the top there? Now here, there, five. 
What was that, Paul? F5 to run the, the presentation from the first screen. Okay, okay. so click F5. Back. F5 for screen sharing. There we go. Uh, okay, okay great. Control. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, team effort. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> okay, great. All right, so we've got the five I insider the secrets. PC instead of crap and tosh. PC, yeah. by the way, stands for proper computer. Yes. Oh, thank you, Paul. All right. <laughs> Good. So I hope this isn't going to run away from me tonight, but it looks like it's off and running. So the agenda for tonight is we'll have a look at the five insider secrets of award winners and which attrition and resignation, recognition and rewards, reputation and revenues, improved culture and morale, and wait, wait, wait. Okay, just click on that uh, little video down there. Yep, that should stop it. All right, okay. now um, you're in control. Thank you, okay. <laughs> and then secret number five, wait, it's back on again. Happiness and appreciation, and then we'll have a look at the free five minute, 25, se 25 minute sessions to use your VIP invitations for tonight's members. Now, can I go next? Well, yes, all right. Now, just see if I can pause that. All right, so now we're having a look at the first secret for inside, inside benefits for a award. Oh, actually, I, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is my first run at doing this on Zoom. So forgive me for the crinkles that we're ironing out as we go. Yeah, you're and okay. Is that going to... It should be, it should be fine. It clicked it. It'll come on, but I... Okay. Maybe I can pause it again. All right. So we're having a look at the costs of staff attrition or resignation. And since the fallout of COVID-19 with the great resignation, there's been some true costs that have been researched and found. So the great resignation has revealed for us now that 38% of the workforce are going to be leaving in the next 12 months and that the replacement costs for staff is going to be used to be $10,000 for each employee. Whoops. Let's go back. And that's now risen to 23,000 per employee. And according to PWFC research, the number one reason as to why employees say that they're leaving is due to a lack of recognition. And so what are the three things that are employees saying that they most want? Uh, according to research from a HR magazine, it's remuneration, bonuses, and rewards. Okay, so secret number two, which is the costs of recognition versus rewards. Are you gonna go for me now? Let's play. Come on. <laughs> Actually, you should be able to click the arrow key and it will just take you onto the next animation, I think. Uh, thank you. Yes. All right. Ooh, there we go. Okay. That's how it works. All right. So now we're going to have a look at the costs of running ads and star fires versus the benefits from getting awards. And so if we have a look at the costs of running ads, you can see that for Google or Facebook ads, we're looking at between 12,000 to 120,000 per annum for a small to medium business. For newspaper ads, that can be anything from $600 a week to 92,000 a week for the big newspapers in Sydney. For radio ads, it could be $900 to $8,000 per week. And for TV ads, we're looking at about $2,500 to $11,000 a week. So when we compare that to the cost of hiring staff, we're looking at $23,000 per person. So if there's businesses thinking, I'll run some more ads, and they don't have enough staff, and that, or, that already increases demands, we're then going to have additional costs for replacing staff to try and meet those demands as well versus the benefits of going for and winning awards, which would be less than $2,000 per person or per category per year. And when winning has its rewards, you can see that it, it's, a, it's a nice way of being able to do business. So the next slide, here we go, is, is we're going to have a look at an award-winning story here of uh, one of the awards nominations that I worked for just going to find my notes here on my other presentation to my side. Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to do two things at once. <laughs> okay, so this is Luke Ivanetti from Property Position One Property. Go to my slide there. That's the one. And where's my notes? Here we go. All right. 
So in 2009 and 2010, as a real estate, oop, wait, no, can't put it there. <laughs> ah, let's go back. All right, here we are. All right, as a real estate agency owner, ah, wait, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, as a real estate agency owner, Luke, in 2000 and 2010 had been a previous industry awards winner and finalist, but in 2021, he realized it was time to go for some more awards again because something unique had happened. Now, the situation for Luke was that he had just managed to survive the COVID lockdowns. And during this time, he witnessed other business owners forced to lay off staff and close their doors. So for him, he knew his, his employees were valuable to him as they'd been facing many obstacles during COVID lockdowns, having to move their work from the office to home and running families at the same time in school as well. So they'd been struggling with the challenges of having to do all of this extra work at home and still you know, juggling school and family. And with all of these demands and challenges, Luke was worried about his business becoming another COVID statistic. So he knew he had to do something. He thought he could spend more, more money on ads to help bring in more work for his staff to do, but he also knew that these increased demands uh, could cause him to lose some of them, and he didn't want to do that. So he decided to try something different. And with my help, he chose to put forward a business award nomination for his valuable employees, recognising the way that they'd been able to rise to the challenge of meeting the new and different demands. And at the time, it seemed like a risk for him to take because there were no guarantees that they would be selected as finalists for the awards he nominated them for. But he also knew that he couldn't fail his employees by not trying. So he called me and we got to work. That wait. <laughs> okay, so this is the process that we went through together. In his initial discovery call, we researched which awards would be best for Luke to strategically go for. And in recognition of his staff and their performances in his business, the, the awards that would gain help his business gain the most market authority as well. Now, you can see in the REIQ awards that they have up to 22 categories that were relevant for Luke, and there were four that specifically worked for him uh, when he wanted to nominate his staff. So if we remove from the 22 categories, the main, the top four, uh, for Luke that worked out to be the corporate support person of the year for his office manager that had been there 10 years, business development manager of the year for Barbara, who just recently joined the business in the first year, small residential agency of the year for Luke's business performance as he's been going for 15 years. And he had in mind to apply for an award next year for community service for some voluntary work that he'd recently started doing. Next. Yep, there we go. So this was the consequences of the awards nominations that we did together and submitted for him. And the email that he received from REIQ for the awards for excellence. And uh, you can see he forwarded it on for me and it says to the position one team, a big congratulations on Magella and Barbara being chosen as finalists in their respective categories for the 2021 REIQ Awards for Excellence. Both Magella and Barbara are well-deserved recipients and being chosen as a finalist recognises their standing in the property industry. Unfortunately, position one property missed out on being selected in the small agency category this year, but will re-enter the awards again next year. And, he'll, and he kept me um, up to date on the awards evening as it came forward. And so this was just a really good example for Luke being an exemplary award nominee and his terrific attitude of if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. So with secret number three, this is where we get to the enhanced reputation and revenues. So if you stop for a moment and think about your own business or your people, and if you became award winners, what would it be like for you if your people were recognized and remembered? And if you found that your products or projects were launched and promoted with greater ease, if your business profiles and people's reputations were, were raised and brands made more visible, and if industry alliances were expanded with network opportunities and connections increased. So now I know it's after six o'clock and it's a little bit late in the day for any maths or statistics, so we'll keep this really brief. And what I wanted to share with you is if you've ever wondered about the secret financial benefits of being an award winner, 
This is where some research gave us the answers to that. Back in 2017, the University of the University of Leicester for the British Quality Foundation and the European Foundation for Quality Management were curious about the post effects of small businesses and larger companies winning awards. So for the International Stevie Business Awards winners, in the first year of becoming a winner, small businesses increased their operating incomes by up to 63% and sales went up by 39% whereas the larger company awards winners in the first year of winning had operating incomes go up by 48% and after three years sales still continue to rise up to 77%. Now this was compared with other similar sized non award winning businesses and companies in the same area. Just to show as as a comparison over that three year period if winning if going for a winning in a when winning an award had made a difference at all to the smaller to medium sized businesses or the larger companies and indeed it did, which is which is good to know. It actually it'd be interesting. I've come across some other research that was done on businesses in China, uh, but I haven't come across any research yet that's been done in Australia for award winning businesses. So that would be good to know. The impacts it the impact it makes for us here as well. Right, so the secret number four is about improved culture and staff morale. So I'm going to ask you, please, if you could all close your eyes for a moment and uh, we're going to do an imagination exercise. <laughs> all right, so if I can ask you to start with a few deep breaths as you close your eyes and just imagine. Now see yourself that you're at a, an, an awards black tie gala ceremony event where you're seated at a large white dinner table with friends and you've just had a delicious meal with drinks, you're feeling full, relaxed and happy. You start to notice the lights in the ballroom start to dim and some exciting music is starting up. You see an MC walk up to a podium on the stage as he straightens some envelopes in his hands. He leans into the microphone and a spotlight centers on him. He starts to speak of his gratitude for the organizers of this event the servers of the fine food and drinks, and he shares a funny, embarrassing joke with the audience. The crowd laughs and then draws silent as he thanks them for their attendance. He begins to announce the various categories of the award ceremony, the criteria of what judges were looking for, and the nominees for each one. He announces the names of all the category finalists and awards winners and invites them all to come up to the stage. Now, can you see yourself in this scene? Do you know where you and others are positioned there? Where are you in this scene? How is it making you feel? Are you a little frustrated? Maybe feeling a bit jealous? Or are you proud or elated? Now, please hold on to these thoughts and feelings as we continue. And as you begin to open your eyes, please think about the following questions. Who here has won an award in recognition of their work? Who would like to win a business award or nominate someone else who is worthy? And is there anyone here who perhaps hasn't thought before of going for an award? Thank you for your imagination. And let's have a look now at secret number five, which is expanding happiness and appreciation. So in this slide, I'd like to share with you uh, a little bit about my own journey of being an award winner and my career of sales and whoops let's just jump back pause I say can I say that my career hasn't always been happy days with rainbows and lollipops and that back in the days of commission only insurance sales that I had my challenging moments and so back then when I was a young salesperson with three young children uh, and the, the recent closure of Ansett Airlines had led me to a commission only sales job and so being new in the game, I faced constant rejections and days of no income, but I had to persist due to a big home loan I'd taken out for a stable roof over my children's heads. And in the beginning, there were several days of sitting alone in the car, crying and wondering if I could ever do this work successfully. Saying that, I'm sure I'm not the only salesperson in the room who's ever sat in the car before, <laughs> crying, feeling unwanted and scared. Nevertheless, I dried my tears and went to work and I learned the W. Clement Stone sales system. And within 18 months, I started to break some state and national sales records. And in good time, my own manager nominated me for a national sales competition award, and I won. 
And this award-winning experience led me to a life-defining moment and for my children. Consequently, I was strengthened in the power of self-belief and resilience. And this change impacted my children's lives as well. Today, my children are all happy, healthy, and confident adults pursuing their lives and studies and career goals as well. So I can say firsthand that expressing your appreciation for someone can indeed make a day or change a life, and it can reach even further into the generations of those watching from the sidelines. And all that is necessary is your willingness to put your appreciation into words. Okay, so let's have a look at the awards application process. So before we start, it's always nice to have a look at the competitions awards because it can help you work out which awards might be right for you. That's where we could use Goose VPN, which is that nice little techie tool that uh, Nick mentioned for us at the start there. And so then next we would start to begin the application process, which is for the awards nominations, where we'd want to tell a clear and precise story, back up any claims and proofread it all. Of course, after we've submitted our award-worthy nomination, we would uh, acknowledge all of the participants involved, celebrate and then uh, maximise our media reach to let people know that we've been nominated or selected as finalists or even winners. And of course, if the application was unsuccessful, that's okay. We take the opportunity to get feedback, rewrite and re-enter the next awards and see that it's an opportunity to keep improving. Okay, and in the words of Simon Sinek, when we help ourselves, we find moments of happiness. And when we help others, we find lasting fulfillment. So now we get to the VIP invitations, where I'd like to share with you the 25 minute discovery session that's available for each of you here tonight. And you just need to book a time with me to do that. And we can do that to help you discover which award is right for you. If you've already begun the process and you would like a bit of support in evaluating an awards nomination you've put together to check that it's going to be something that's likely to be shortlisted, I can have a look at that for you as well. And the next thing is to get ready to nominate your award winner and be sure to submit your entry before awards portals close because it is awards nominating season <laughs> those awards portals are open and will be closing soon this time of the year so in summary for tonight what we've had a look at is the five insider secrets of why you want to be a business award winner why business awards are great for business people and profits the business awards nomination process and winner stories and your vip invitations with your free 25 minute award strategy session and a nomination evaluation to check your award-worthy application, where you might want to lean on my 85% nominations win rate if you would like to choose me as your business awards writer. So in closing, in the words of Voltaire, appreciation is a wonderful thing. It makes what is excellent in others belong to us as well. And I'd just like to say my name is Lara Arden from the Business Awards Academy. It's been a pleasure being with you and sharing this information with you tonight. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Lara. Uh, anyone got any questions? Or well, who here has uh, entered awards too? Would, uh, would like to know a bit more. So I see uh, Peter. Uh, yeah, got a I had a, I, sorry, I, Lara, I had a question for you. Please. How important is it to get the story right when it comes to awards? That's a really good question. And Peter, it's there's a couple of different ways that it can go um, because there's different styles of stories that you can choose and it really and the answer is that it really depends on your nominee and the message that you want to deliver for them for what you, what it is you want them to be known for because that's really what it's going to be about at the end of the day it's a story about your nominee and that can be expressed in a, in a number of different ways and what i mean by that is that let's say there's seven different types of story formulas you know like there might be one of a few there that you think oh that one could be a really good one to use or you might find that there's just one in particular that's perfect for the situation that happened for that person and how you'd like to um, demonstrate that award worthiness about them and what it, what the situation was does that make sense thank you, thank you. yeah thank you and we have Holborn. 
Hello, thank you for that, Lara. I must say I have been very blasé when it comes to awards, although I did win a, a BX Print Media and Photography Award a few years ago and was a finalist last year and a finalist this year again. And wow. there's, I know there's so much more possible when it comes to awards and it's kind of like, you know, there's always a million things to do in business and, and prioritising this. So what, what would you suggest, where's the best place to look to find awards? Do you just Google awards in your category or is, is there a central place you can actually find all these awards? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I wish there were a central place. <laughs> it's probably nice if someone could put that together. It's a great idea. Um, at the moment, it's it's a it, that there is quite a bit of research involved as far as Google is concerned, and having a look at the different places where you can go, because there could be there could be awards that you can go for in government. So whether that's local, state, or national awards, um, there could be awards that you could go for within your own industry. There could be awards that are available for you, uh, you know, within other industries, but you know, whatever it is that you do is related to what they do. Does that make sense? So yeah, it, it, it pays. That's where sometimes it can be helpful having a look at your competition and seeing what sort of awards they've won, because that can open the door then to help you realize, oh, I could go for awards in this, you know, in this particular place or this field. And on that note, it's, it's really important to do that research because, you know, that sadly there are some bogus awards out there and there's some people that have you know let others know that hey I can write an awards nomination for you and you'll win you know just pay me this amount of money and there is others who have said well if you put your award entry into this particular awards portal um, you'll win and it'll only cost you this much money so it's important that we do the research to find those awards that are actually legitimate and credible because you know the, the, the beauty of winning credible awards is then you know we get to go to you <laughs> the media queen <laughs> to help us be able to you know publicize that and let others know hey here's this really credible award you know that has happened for us in our business and we'd really love to thank those who contributed to that and to let people know hey here, here we are and this is what we do and uh, yeah so definitely it's all about getting that um third party or peer validation to let others know that what it is that you do or that you have as your products and services is something that's really good quality and that you want to share that good news. Yeah, thank you. We love good news. And the, the beauty is of winning an award is kind of like getting media coverage. You know, once you've got it, you've got it forever. So exactly. that's the beautiful thing. You're leaving a legacy every time you're you're adding to your bow. So yeah, uh, sure. string to your bow. So yes, it's something definitely worth putting some more time into. Uh, thank you, Lara. Pleasure. Yeah. As in. Yeah, thanks for that presentation, Lara. That was awesome. I think what a lot of people, and, and I'm guilty of this, is that I haven't really, except for one particular situation where I was helping a franchisee in New Zealand go for the French National Franchise Awards and I sort of wrote their presentation for them. I think people don't really leverage enough whether they are a finalist or a, an award winner after the whole awards go yes. through. So we had cafes many, many years ago. In fact, I've still got the two awards up here on the cabinet. And what we did was a little trick, which I'd like to share with people is uh, when you're talking about, it, it just sparked my mind when you were talking about uh, looking at your competitors, what we did was when we won our first award, I drew a circle on the map until I found another cafe that had an award. And we were in a place called Barara at the time. Um, so we were the most award-winning cafe in the upper Barara area. And then when we won two awards, the circle got bigger. And by the time we sold the cafe three years or the cafe three years later, we were the most award winning cafe in the upper North Shore of Sydney. Now, the interesting byproduct of that was that incentivized everybody, this is early 2000s, incentivized everybody to like, you know, go harder and all that sort of thing. And we ended up being nominated for the Restaurant and Catering Awards for the, for the top five cafe in, in all of Sydney. And that was a result of what, how we leveraged it afterwards. And obviously we did a good job, right? How we leveraged it afterwards. Um, so I think, you know, uh, I'm, I'm now thinking, you know, I've got clients that I should say, you know what, we should go back to that and, and talk to you and help me help them get awards. So yeah, so it's an awesome presentation. But I think my, my point is leveraging it after whether you win or not is yeah. super critical. 
Hundred percent, yeah, and it's such a golden opportunity. Thank you for that's a beautiful example, Azim. Thank you for describing that because it's true that how it can really expand and you know allow things to grow and develop, and the opportunity it gives us to be able to get that free media attention. You know where you've got radio stations or TV channels or magazines coming to you to interview you to say, hey, you've got some really good news. We want to run that and share that, and that gets picked up, you know, by other channels and stations, and they want to run with that those really good stories as well. So definitely those opportunities to leverage mm. and share and it just flows on and on. Mm. Yeah. Things just keep growing. Yes, Paul. Yeah. And another thing is that if you don't win, someone that many of us on board here know very well makes a very strong point that being a finalist is nearly as good as being a, a winner because you say you're a finalist, it's the same thing. And you're right, Paul, because, you know, you actually get to use the logos for a lot of those credible awards mm. as well in your marketing. So, you, yeah, whether you're a finalist or a winner, you're right. It's a pretty even keel. It's still an opportunity to share that with others. Good news. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Can I ask, Lara, in terms of... Um... Uh, sort of submitting awards, I, I guess there's a, a couple of ways to get it. One is to be nominated by someone. The other one is to be is to self-nominate yourself. Uh, and I know that in the in the past, not now, but in the past, I've been a bit reticent about sort of self-nominating because I think, well, you know, you you can't be sort of uh, flying your own fight there. Um, but uh, what are some, I suppose, uh, some, some hints, uh, some tips around, or, or how would you suggest? You go around looking for awards, but not only looking for them, but about, you know, putting in nominations for those sort of things or getting nominated for them. Yeah, good question. So, look, it's really nice to nominate someone else because then it's a lovely surprise for them to go, oh, look, I've been nominated. But then they've got a job to do because they've got it. They're typically the ones that are asked to answer the questions unless the nomination entry comes back to you and then you need to develop and enhance the answers that were given because usually awards are made up of phases. So, or rounds, if you like, round one is kind of heats in a competition. It's like a dance competition. <laughs> so you get heat one, heat two, and then you got the finals. And so people get selected out of each of the heats and then they get put together in the final group as well. So even when you nominate yourself, you know what? It's really nice to ask others for feedback. So as an example, in because uh, you know, I like to compete annually in the dance conventions and competitions. So even though I'm putting myself forward for that and, you know, I've got to go through the heats, I've actually gone to the judges at the end of each heat and asked for a little bit of feedback because, you know, I knew that they'd be watching me and very kindly, you know, a couple of different judges came forward and said to me after the, after the heats, yeah, look, you did really well. Just try, you know, doing these things or those things and that'll help you get through to the next round. And so, you know, we can actually do that for ourselves as well, even as as a self nominee, you know, if we can be um, forward in approaching the judges and just saying, look, I'm just keen for some feedback if you can help me. Or, you know, if you don't feel comfortable in approaching the judges or you can't make contact with anyone, that's what I'm here for as well. You know, I'm happy to do that evaluation for you and let you know what your probability is of being shortlisted. So definitely the answer is feedback. It's great if that you can do as much as you can on your own, but don't try to do it all on your own. It's it's really valuable when you can get others to just give you a little bit of insight on, you know, how it's reading or maybe something extra you could add in there, you know, that they know that would be really helpful for you. And yeah, that, those sorts of things. Does does it, does that sound does that sound like that's answered your question? I think so. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hey, cool. Lara, I must tell you something. In Thailand. In terms of judges, it's all about money. Uh, okay. So are, are you suggesting that they like to be paid, that there's bribery that could work over there? I'm suggesting I am saying bribery yes. and corruption is alive and well. Don't ever think it's not. Oh, That's okay. Oh. You. So in, what you were saying is brilliant. Unfortunately, it doesn't apply in a country like Thailand. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for explaining that. I'm not familiar with what Thailand does as their cultural practice, but I can only speak. important anyway. Uh, well, well, thank you for raising it. You know, I think it's probably worth keeping in mind that, you know, yeah, there are some, um, uh, there are some different practices that people do out there in different cultures. It's not the way that I 
work, you know, I, I like to do things properly with integrity. Um, so yeah, it's not something that I would do. So I'm not aware of those sorts of things, but I guess it goes on. So yeah. Actually, that's probably a really good point that Peter raises, and it really touches on your uh, point too, Lara, about the uh, bogus awards that are out there. Because yeah. I, I must admit, I have received emails from places there to, you know, you know, for these awards, and also for publicity in magazines and that sort of thing, which end up you're paying a lot of money for that sort of thing for it not going very far at all. Yeah. Um, how, how do you distinguish between, you know, what's legitimate and what is quite obviously a, a money grab or, or a bit of a scam get someone else to alert you to any blind spots and this is where i'm saying don't try to do it on alone like on your own because sometimes you know we can get all excited about these things and think oh this is great it's going to be a wonderful opportunity but you know if the blinkers are on and we're not aware of those blind spots we we might we might forget to engage our critical thinking and you know miss seeing that well wait a minute there's something that they just said there or something that you know, they, they just sent me with a link that made me think that all oh, that actually doesn't really look that legitimate. Do you know what I mean? So that's what I, I think is if you can make sure that there's others involved in the process with you, it'll ensure that your critical thinking stays engaged to make sure that what you're doing, you, that you're going up the right path. Do you know what I mean? We don't want to be, you know, going down the wrong path with these sorts of things because they're meant to be a good opportunity. They're meant to be something that demonstrates quality and integrity and, uh, you know, that's the way we want it to go. So we want to make sure that we're engaging with, you know, awards organisations that are delivering that sort of a recognition, that sort of award. And is, is there any way to, 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 well, apart from, you know, listening to your gut, which is a part of what I think you're saying as well, too, is like, you know, when your antenna up, uh, are there any, any ways of, you know, sort of, I suppose, knowing that they're legitimate as well. I mean, obviously, Telstra Business Awards, you know that Telstra is involved, the big company, and, um, you know, they're, they're, they're obviously the well-known ones. But there's also lots of lesser-known ones as well, too. Yeah, that's true. I Well, that's where the research is an important part of the planning side of it, just to be sure that... Um, you know, that the work that you're going to be putting into this is for something that's legitimate. Um, because, you know, there's time that, that gets put into putting these nominations together. Um, and you want to make sure that it's it's time well spent, especially if there's an investment involved. Usually it isn't a great amount. Um, that's, that's probably the first red flag. I'd think if, you know, there was going to be thousands of money that need to be paid to enter into an event, because, you know, there might it, there might only be, you know, like a hundred or a couple of hundred dollars uh, to enter an event. And that's usually to cover the awards nomination process for somebody to, you know, evaluate and judge the application in the end, or that goes towards the cost of the gala event. You know, that could be the ticket to, to attend if you become a finalist and a winner. So definitely just checking with, you know, one or two other people to be sure that this is something that's valid and reliable before you go ahead and you know, press the button and submit because, yeah, you just want to make sure that it's a good investment and it's money well spent because it's meant to be. Mm. In a situation like that, Lara, would it be good to uh, look up the previous award winners? You could make, yes, you could definitely see if you can make contact with them. I think most awards, uh, you know, if they've been running for some time, they'll show you an alumni of the previous winners. So that should be available for you to be able to contact them. And then you could always see if you could get in contact with the people who are hosting and running the awards themselves and just even quiz them a little bit more to find out, you know, what it is that they're doing, how long the awards have been running, the various categories, and just see if you can get them to open up and say more about the awards. Because if it's something that's genuine, they'll be able to have a really clear and concise conversation with you about that. And if it's not, I think that's when you'll start to realise, oh, maybe this isn't really everything that it's saying it is, and I need to be a bit more careful. But yeah, definitely, I think, it's it's important to involve others as well this is where the networking comes in <laughs> you know just invite another business friend into that conversation that you know or that motivation that you're having just to be sure that this is something that's going to be good for you and you know you could and one thing i'll, I'll ask you to do is um, if there's financial evidence re requested as part of your awards nomination sometimes it is when you're um putting in comments about your financial performance it's really nice to include like an accountant's letter so uh, if you've got someone like an accountant or a bookkeeper who's validating 
you know, your financial rewards and your performance, you could ask them to do some checking for you as well. That's, an, that's another, another person you can engage to help you ensure that you've got that critical thinking turned on and uh, making sure that it's going to be something that's right for you. Great idea and getting the accountants uh, involved as well too means that there's third party verification that uh, you know what you're saying is not just what you're saying but in fact it is it's correct there's no embellishment with it exactly all. exactly yeah definitely it keeps things honest and true hmm. that's 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 my understanding of the purpose of this is for us to be able to acknowledge those who are doing a great job in the community and to recognize them and uh, and let others know as well hey look here's something you know some people who are doing great things out there and they're setting benchmarks and something we should have a look at this is how innovations and you know inventions come forward for the rest of us as well so they're really a great opportunity for us we're kylie i've got a question i also do community um work. should i also add their nominations and awards that i've received onto my business account yeah, definitely. I think it's a fabulous idea, Kylie. That's, I think that's what I wanted to ask. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Because, you know, these achievements, they, they're important. They what give people credibility and it lets people know that, you know, you're interested in doing things that are of value to people, make a difference and help people change their lives and make it a better place for all of us. I've been nominated in my five categories for VA industry but i've never won oh wow congratulations to being nominated that's the first step mm. yeah and you know like if you had somebody nominate you last time then that's a good indicator that you know this is something where someone has shown some belief in you to say hey look i thought this person was doing a really great job and i'd really like to have them be recognized and although you were nominated and maybe it didn't go through to the next phase that's okay you know it's still an opportunity if if you're willing to investigate that and nominate yourself again because it could just be that you'll get through to the next phase the next time and be selected as a finalist and a winner yeah thank you yeah welcome and of course you can uh, use the fact that you've been nominated uh, on your uh, website and in your material as well too because just that nomination is enough too isn't it it's a great recognition absolutely yeah. And, and I guess looking out for the uh, for the badges, like for some of those there, mm. uh, whether you're nominated or a finalist or a winner, there are uh, you know official badges and things that you can use on your you know, your website and in your, your marketing as well, isn't there? Yep, for sure. Yep, they're good to have on your business card and your website, and your flyers. Yep, yep, it's great. Good recognition. And alongside uh, testimonials and reviews, which uh, I always think we should be getting, uh, it's good third party proof that in fact. Uh, not just you saying you're doing a, a good job, but other people acknowledging that as well too, which uh, helps uh, people you know that that don't know you uh, make decisions about uh, you know whether they should be you know whether they, they could ring you or should call you or so making decisions you know about uh, whether you're the business to work with as opposed to someone else. Yeah, and it it does influence this. You're absolutely right in saying that, and I know myself. You know when I'm looking at for example, movies or TV shows that I'm flicking through and, you know, or even somewhere I'm going to go and eat and I have a look at the reviews or if they've been award winning and, and it does have its influence on me. So no doubt it has influence on others too, when they're looking in our business, if they can see that, you know, there's something that it's been nominated for or selected as a finalist, as a winner, it definitely makes a, a good difference. And for no, me, it's you know, so years ago, ago, no we idea. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> That's right, Peter, go ahead. Peter? Well, now I'm very shy. Sorry. Lara, years ago, we ran a very successful handmade tie business, and we won an award. We won two awards, actually. Okay? Wow. Wonderful. And those awards did one thing from a commercial point of view. Okay. It enabled us to triple the prices. There you go. Yeah. And that was the bottom line, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. What a what a wonderful consequence to enjoy. Nice work. That's and great. Also, that means we we're really supplying the silk at a way too cheap a price. Ah, <laughs> uh, look, that's okay, you know, because you raise the industry standard. You know, by winning that award and, and raising the prices, you're able to increase the value of something that's a, a really special product. So, you know, like that's fantastic. So it's that's one of the things that awards can do for us is raise those industry standards. Great. 
Nice work. Thank you. Nick? Yes. What were you saying before? Oh, I was saying that the way that I choose bottles of wine, because I have no idea what I should be looking for, <laughs> is by the little award stamps on. And I have to say, I did see once on a bottle of wine that I did choose, when I got home, it had those little award stamps on it, but uh -huh. it wasn't a war, it didn't say award, it said something else. It, it was just in the shape of the award. So the shape was enough for me <laughs> to buy the... Uh... Yes, so it, uh, there's our human bias coming in. We, we, we are so driven by our heuristics, which is our shortcuts for making decisions. But, you know, like, it's not a bad thing. Sometimes it makes life a bit easier and it's a bit of fun, you know, if you found a different type of wine. <laughs> but I like that because that really does apply to business as well. The, the, uh, what was the word heuristics? Heuristics, it's because it, I did my degree in psychology. So heuristics are the um, biases that we have in our thinking that it allows us to have the shortcut so that we can make decisions a lot faster. And an example of a heuristic is when we see that shape of a logo and we think, oh, that's obviously something that has authority and it and it's influenced, it's influencing for us in being able to make decisions like that. <laughs> And that's probably quite true too, because with those awards, uh, if you are a finalist or just been nominated and you're allowed to use the the badge or whatever, the yeah, the, of, yeah. often people aren't looking to see that you're the winner or not. They just see the badge <laughs> and that's what they're making their judgment on. Yeah, that's it. And that's okay because you know what? You still did a great job to get there and become a finalist. Absolutely. It, there could only be one winner, but you know, like I think you're all winners if you've got that far, really. You've done a great job to get there. Anyone else got any questions or comments or uh, maybe something from their experience? Or if you're in an award at the moment, I know there are some people on the show at the moment who have in the running for, I think the BX awards that are running in the summer and the Mumpreneur awards as well too. So this is your time to ask that question. It yeah. could be that this one here gets you over the line, but we've got one from Oldham. Uh, this may be a silly question, but do you have to be a mum to be in the Mumpreneur awards? <laughs> oh, that is, a, you know what, I... To be honest, I don't know what the uh, eligibility criteria is for that one because you you could be a great cat or dog lover. And <laughs> does that mean you're still a mum or no? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a mum to yeah. many animals. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and what if animals. I was to say I identify as a mother? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I think we're going to leave that one there, Paul, and just pass it aside. It's like, that's just too much. Uh, I do have a serious question, though, as well. Lara, if people want to work with you, how do you how do you work with them? With okay. All right. It's, it's actually best to get me by phone. Honestly, my inbox tends to get a little bit flooded these days. So I'm putting together a website at the moment and I'll have a new email address for that. So I'd probably just say, just uh, message me or call me and I'm here. <laughs> I'll pick up and then we can arrange a Zoom from there. Or you can get me on LinkedIn. You can send me a message there if you like or Messenger. Uh, if you want to add me as a friend on Facebook, it's just Lara Arden. You'll see me there. It's a black and white photo. It's the same one on LinkedIn. So you're welcome to message me either of those ways as well. But yeah, I've probably email is not the fastest way for me at the moment, but I'm working on that. So we'll get better. And and on that point, do you work one-on-one -on -one or, or do group training or how, how do you work in that way? Yeah, thank you for asking. So just one-on-one -on -one at the moment, I am looking at putting together a workshop because I've really would love to be able to have these days for business owners to come together. And then, you know, like when you've got, for example, Nick, you know, or um, Peter, when you were querying, like, how do you know whether something's actually legitimate or not? You know, when you come together as a group, that's when we can really engage that group think, the group mind to be able to have a look with our critical eyes to determine whether something's legitimate or not. And so that can make it easier for us as well to then be able to work out an award schedule of the different credible awards that we want to go for and start creating those nominations. And we've got people around us that we can bounce ideas off as well, especially when it comes to crafting the story as to what we want to say about the nominee and, and their journey that makes you know it award worthy. So yeah, th so that's an idea that I'm looking into is being able to run those days uh, to help business owners come together and and put aside time to do those nominations. If, the, if that's something that people would want to do, probably should do a little bit of homework and check that that's 
something people would want to do. Yep, come together as a group. I think okay. so. I think yeah. we'll and I've just dropped your LinkedIn uh, link into chat there. So if people do want to connect with you, Thanks, uh, that's all there. And that's where your contact details are as well, too. Yeah, yeah great. Thank you. As in. All right, Azim, have you got another question? It's like have it's I... just frozen for a second. It's just frozen in time there. Azim, there you go, you're back. You're no longer frozen. Yeah, I'm back now. I'm back now. Just just that, something that you were saying before, Lara. Uh, many years ago, I was actually an adjudicator in the Australian Customer Service Awards. Nice. So I think I think if you can, um, uh, I think if you can, get a set of awards. And as you were saying before, the, the biggest value of those awards was that it was very thorough from our point of view was when we gave the feedback back to all the entries, it was yeah. just enormously beneficial for them to get yeah. that feedback, whether they won or not, just entry. I always say, you know, you've got to go in the Australian Customer Service Awards because it was such a thorough process that we went through to uh, evaluate everybody on, on some standard criteria. So it really is a benefit if you can get the feedback, like you were saying, you know, if you can talk to the to the judges and uh, um, yeah, so I, th I think that's, it's it's really worthwhile ent entering, entering the awards. Yeah, thank you for saying that. And you're absolutely right, that opportunity for feedback and evaluation, it just lets us know how we're going. Look, because, you know, when it comes to getting through and being selected as a finalist or a winner, let's say they've got a 20 checkpoint system or a list and let's say you come up with 15 of them and there might have only been you know like the, just those few extra things that you needed to do to be shortlisted and get over the line when you get that feedback you know how close you were mm -hmm. and it makes it so much easier then to you know nominate yourself or to be able to put a nomination entry in for someone else again so definitely making good use of that feedback and realizing that it's only just a few more things to do and then we're there because <laughs> really off that's often the case is you're just so close and there's just those couple of missing links of information that just is is all that was needed to help you get over the line and and with things like customer service and in many awards that difference can actually be quite subjective from mm. the judge's point of view in terms of like the person who turned up to evaluate your business as the secret shopper on that day you know you yes. there's all sorts of things so yes. you can get the the solid framework and say yeah these are the things we can definitely do but you know this part the reason we lost that was just crappy luck right you know yeah whatever, you know? yeah just on the day yeah yeah and that's okay. I mean, it's good to know that much too, because, you know, then people can be more prepared, especially when it's um, awards nomination season. <laughs> it's got a window of opportunity to be really good. <laughs> I'll share a sneak. I'll share a sneaky that I don't do anymore. Okay. Is if I went into a restaurant, a cafe, I'd always carry a little notebook and yeah. I pulled the little notebook out after the server had gone and you'd always see either the owner would stick their head around and you get the most amazing service because they thought you were there evaluating them for awards wow <laughs> good tip. particularly in big hotels it just it's a treat <laughs> it's a bit of does fun. it work in mcdonald's <laughs> no but it's but but nick it's the little fold and put it back in your coat that really does it mate it's, you know, is there anything else we can get you sir you know <laughs> love it good fun <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you mentioned, Lara, that, uh, you know, you, you've got an opportunity there for people to have a discussion with you about you know, the awards. How does all that happen? Okay, great. Thank you for checking in. So I've do, I do a 25 minute free check in and that's for a discovery call where we're going to do some research together. We're going to have a look at some awards that you could go for. We'll probably start with having a look at what the competitors have done to just give you some insights as to what you could do, which awards you could go for as well. Hopefully that's where we'll find anything that might not be that might be a bit risky, you know, that you might not want to go for um, because there's always options. So that's the good news. And so that's the first thing we'd have a look at is which would be the good awards for you to go for and work out a little bit of a strategy there for that, because there's lots of different categories as well. So for example, remember we talked about Luke's story and for the real estate awards industry, there were 22 categories and he found that four were relevant. So when you have a look at the Stevia International General Business Awards by comparison, there's a hundred different categories to go for there. So it definitely pays to do that research first. So there's a good 25 minutes we've got to get that started there as, as that inquiry 
areas and then you know whether you engage me and I help you with the rest of the process of getting the awards nomination done put together and ready for submission we can do we can do that or if it's something where you've decided you know what I want to give this a crack myself that's fine too and you'll go ahead and write the nomination if you'd like to just double check it with me so that I can give you an evaluation on how close you are to being shortlisted excuse me Let's turn that off. Yep. Then we can do that as well. And I offer a free 25 minute session to have a look at that and let you know how close you are for that to be being shortlisted. And if there's any extra work that you might want to do to just help that go over the line for you. Excellent. Thank you. And if anyone want to get in touch with you to uh, take advantage of that, how would they do that? Yeah, probably reach me on either LinkedIn or Messenger or you've, uh, if you put my number there in the group chat, you're, you're welcome to just give me a call or send me a text. That's fine too. Yeah, you happy for us to put your number there? Or will you, your number will be on LinkedIn anyway, won't it, on your LinkedIn I, I profile? Yeah, I think it is, yeah. yeah. So or I've just ask me for it, that's fine. <laughs> okay, I've got the LinkedIn profile there so you can check it out there. Kylie. Um, I've got a question. I've come across a lot of awards that you need to pay for. Okay. Yep. Some of them you do, some of them you don't. It just depends. So that's where it pays to do a little bit of research. And then and with our critical thinking hats on, just make sure that it's something that is legitimate and worth going for as well. That was, um, that's what I was a bit of worried about because some of them you don't know whether they're legitimate or not. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Just just get a second person to help check that with you, Kylie, and then you then you can be more confident and sure that this is safe. It's it's a good thing to go for. Thank you. Welcome. Excellent. Well, thanks very much for uh, sharing all that tonight, Lara. Thanks. Just given a whole layer of perspective on it as well, and uh, you know, particularly now that we're in this award season, and there are so many awards, and I know that there are some. Uh, finalists and entrance into awards here on the show as well too so it's been it's been yeah. great yeah I, actually on that note i'm keen to know who, who are our bx finalists here in the room tonight <laughs> oldman azim nick oh congratulations guys let's see if we've got anyone else putting their hand up there yeah okay no that's good that's great well done guys excellent and there's the um so oldman you mentioned there's some mum awards all good on you 2017 that's awesome <laughs> great news great news and all when you mentioned there's some mumpreneur um awards open right now is that something you've been selected as a finalist for as well no i've just noticed a lot of people on my socials obviously mums and they've, they've just announced the winners they just had an award ceremony recently for the mumpreneur okay. awards okay. and so no doubt there'll be another one coming up but you know yeah. I, I do wonder about that do you have to be a mum to be in it you know or or yeah. you know, would it would a fur baby mum count <laughs> But a foster mum count or you know like what are the category you know descriptions on that criteria yeah yeah good question be good to find out yeah, yeah it would it would yes well yes. i can tell you old one i'd definitely be out of that uh, if yes. that was the case. paul paul is possibly uh, in the running but uh, definitely not me <laughs> uh, who, right. uh, sorry you go nick no, no, i've just... nailed that category because you might not some of you who haven't been around so long might not remember how long ago Matt Alderton started BX. Yeah. Um, but in his second year, he commenced the BX Awards. And I won the Marketing Coordinator of the Year. Wow. The next year, he changed the title of Marketing Coordinator. So I am the one, the only, the forever <laughs> Coordinator of the Year of BX. <laughs> oh, congratulations. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> I didn't do any good as MX, MXO the following year, but we won't say about that. <laughs> but you got the award for that. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we do have a prize for tonight as well, too. Yes. So it's probably time to draw that. Tell us what is the, the door prize for tonight, Lara? Okay, so this is for anyone who would like to go for a business award. But you know what, the good news is for tonight is that you don't actually have to have gone for any business awards yet. But I do have these available for people who go for a business award. And although they do all the hard work and they get nominated, they might not make it as a finalist or as a winner, but they still get to have a great holiday that they can go away with an accommodation voucher that's up to $1,000 and they can choose from over 100 exciting destinations around the world. So that's thanks to the Institute of WOW and globalvacationaward.com. And so uh, with that as well, they get time with you as well, double time, is that right? They do, yes. So they'll still have me for their free 25-minute session 
and they can have both of those actually where they'll they'll get the strategy session with me where we'll have a look and do the research together and see what's out there and what would be good for you to go for and then we'll also do the evaluation session at the end just to make sure that uh, we've got everything good to go and that you've got that best possibility of being shortlisted as well so yep and, you've got both those sessions for tonight and then you can go on holiday to relax and to write your award submission <laughs> exactly <laughs> all these great places you can go well, Actually, Nick, that's the catch that Lara was talking about before, because what she didn't say was that if you take the holiday voucher, she has to come with you too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm small, so I do fit in the uh, hand luggage. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's bring up our wheel of names and let's draw this uh, and find out who our lucky winner is. Okay. All right. Well, let's spin this wheel. Virtual drum roll, please. So everybody's name is in here. And of course, you've got to be in the room to win. And a winner here, Jacqueline Price. Again, she won last week too. <laughs> Are you still here? Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Fantastic. And you're in the awards as a finalist too, aren't you? Jack? I am, yes, with BX. And this is my fifth award finalist wow. for this year so far. Fantastic. Oh, congratulations. That's awesome. And I have to say too that you are almost published on Amazon, are you not? Yeah. That's my third book coming up on Amazon now. Excellent. So you've got a lot happening there. So well, well done. You are the lucky winner for tonight. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's great news. Well done, Jackie. Thank uh, you so much. So we will link you up tomorrow by email or, or so, yeah, probably by email. So we'll introduce you and then you and Lara can coordinate together yeah. to, to organize that uh, session there. Great. All thank right, you so, so much. <laughs> I would like to say a very warm thank you to you, uh, Lara, for coming on uh, tonight and uh, sharing your knowledge, your expertise in this uh, uh, awards process. A great presentation as well, too. So thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. It's been great to be here. Thank you, everyone. And let's give her a, a warm virtual round of applause. <laughs> All right. So if you enjoyed that or you think someone else would benefit from this as well, too, this will be up on the Smash Go YouTube channel. The replay will be up on the Smash Go YouTube channel uh, tomorrow afternoon. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, the link is now in chat. Go and click on it. Go and click the subscribe button. Click the little bell that appears beside the subscribe button. And that will then give you the notification as soon as that uh, is uploaded. I know there's a couple of people that couldn't make it tonight. And so uh, they'll be able to view that on the uh, Smash Go channel as well. And again, if you are not a member of the Smash Go, uh, sorry, the Business Owners Smashing Online Facebook group, that link is now in chat as well too. So once again, thanks very much, uh, Lara, for uh, everything you've uh, shared tonight. And uh, thanks everyone for showing up again tonight too always good to uh, have your company and uh, we'll be back again same time same place next week have a great evening <laughs>